Hey y'all, it's your girl Jessica Marie Garcia and I am so excited to partner up with El Cine to help raise funds for the LA Food Bank because your donation is so vital to distributing healthy food to hungry neighbors in LA County during this pandemic. And 97% of all revenue goes directly to their programs that provide food for children, hardworking families, struggling seniors, and so many more. So please click the link in the bio and donate. And now, without further ado, I would like to introduce you to the one, the only, the amazing, nay, the gum amazing gum girl. <sighs> this is Gabby Gomez, and you are going to fall madly in love with her if you don't already know her. She's a little Latina who loves to get into shenanigans and chew gum. So I won't spoil anything, but this series is written by Rode Montijo, and uh, this is the first installment. This is Chew, but like chew your food chew your destiny and uh yeah let's get to it chapter one a sticky situation gabby gomez should have seen it coming she had been blowing on that bubble for as long as anyone could remember and it was bound to blow up in her face sooner or later but how could gabby have imagined that something as sweet and as simple as one tiny piece of bubble gum could lead to such terrible trouble even with her parents and teachers always warning that no good would come from so much gum chewing and bubble blowing it would have been hard to believe but then again, Gabby was far from your normal average everyday gum chewer. She chewed bubble gum everywhere. She chewed it here. She chewed it here. She even chewed it here. She chewed gum all day every day and all night every night. And then one morning, <sighs> Huh? Mommy! Gabby woke up to a rather sticky situation. She had gone to bed chomping on a huge wad of gum and now it was stuck in her hair. I know, groaned Gabby as she waited for her mother to come to her rescue. I'm never gonna hear the end of this. There, there, mi corazón, cooed Mrs. Gomez. This will take care of that sticky mess. After witnessing her daughter's predicament, Gabby's mom had rushed out and returned with, of all things, peanut butter. Ay, ew, peanut butter, asked Gabby. Gabby Gomez did not like peanut butter. Yes, peanut butter, answered her mom, or I could get a pair of scissors and we could cut it out. No, 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 that no good Natalie Gooch would never let me live it down. I'd be the joke of the whole school. Gabby squirmed as her mom smeared the nutty goop into her hair. Hold still, soothed Mrs. Gomez. Your nana used to swear by peanut butter for getting out gum. See? Gabby's grandma really knew her stuff about gum or about peanut butter because just like that, the gum was gone from Gabby's hair. <gasps> wow, she exclaimed, it really worked. And no lecture either, Gabby thought. She congratulated herself on her narrow escape and rushed to get ready for school. Now let me wash off all this yucky peanut butter smell. Gabby was peanut butter free and dressed in no time flat. Gracias, mommy, she called as she started out the door. Adios, you too, Rico. But Mrs. Gomez had something to say. Ah, 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 not so fast, young lady. Gabby's heart sank. I, I, I know, here it comes, she thought. Another lecture about chewing gum. Well, at least it's not from Poppy. Nothing's worse than getting a gum lecture from a dentist. She had to act fast. But, but, but mommy, Gabby smiled, her sweetest and most innocent smile. I'm gonna be late and you, and you know how Miss Smoot hates tardiness. Maybe this can wait until after school. And by then hopefully you will have forgotten this whole thing, she added to herself. Oh, no, 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 this won't take long, replied Mrs. Gomez. You'll have more than enough time to get to school. Gabby's heart sank lower. Your father and I have warned you to go easy with chewing gum, haven't we? Yes, mommy. Like the time at the art gallery? What a mess. Yes, mommy. And don't forget about your Tia Carmen's parrot. Poor crackers. He never said another word. Your aunt never got over it. I know, mommy. So I'm sorry to have to do this, but no more gum. A dun dun dun. Chapter two, a stickier situation. No more gum. This is terrible, this is horrible. 
Gabby dragged herself along the sidewalk to school. After so many close calls, her mother had finally laid down the law. Now, Gabby had no idea what she would do. The longest she had ever gone without bubble gum was the time that mean old Natalie Gooch had snatched her gum at the start of school. Gabby hadn't been forced to go that, had to go, had to go that whole day without a single chew, and that had felt like forever. This is the worst day of my life, Gabby grumbled. She couldn't imagine it getting any worse, not even if mean old Natalie Gooch sat on her. Then Gabby remembered something. She reached down into her pocket and pulled out a piece of gum. It was her very last piece of limited edition, mighty mega ultra stretchy, super duper extended bubble bubble gum. The shiny sweet shone in her hand like a rare gem. It was so pretty and pink and felt so smooth and smelled so totally scrumptious that Gabby could almost taste it. Oh, it looked so good. Gabby licked her lips and, and, and just imagine the bubble I could blow with this. Gabby stopped herself. How could I even be thinking what I'm thinking? Mommy would have a heart attack if she knew. Looking around, Gabby saw that there wasn't anyone to see her. Besides, she told herself, it's just one teeny tiny little piece. What could it hurt? Then Gabby did the unthinkable. Plop! Mm. Oh, yum. The flavors of the special limited edition Mighty Mega Ultra Stretchy Super Duper Extend a Bubble Bubble Gum exploded on Gabby's taste buds. It's so mm, scrumptious with every chew. Gabby's fears faded. It's so mm, yummy mm, and so oh, gummy. All the awful things that had happened that morning, the gum in her hair, the peanut butter, even the lecture from her mother began to feel like a bad dream. Soon, any thought of getting busted had vanished. She wished this feeling could last forever. Mm, I bet I could blow the biggest bubble ever. Gabby took a long breath and started to blow. And blow. Until suddenly, I know, Gabby thought. What have I done? Gabby stared at her hands in disbelief. They were a mess, but it didn't stop there. Gabby followed the sticky, chewy, gummy, gooey layers of pinkiness all the way up her arms to her dress, then down her front to her legs and shoes. She was covered all over. She started to reach up to check her face and hair, but knew she didn't need to. As anyone who has gone through a catastrophic bubble gum bubble collapse knows, the face gets it first. <sighs> Gabby stood there completely buried beneath a coat of limited edition, mighty mega, ultra stretchy, super duper, extend a bubble bubble gum. This was a bad situation. Gabby was gummy. I can't go to school like this, she thought. Miss Smoot doesn't even allow gum in class. But I can't go home either. One look at me and mommy would explode. She told me no more gum and now I'm covered in it. Dun, dun, dun. Chapter three stuck. Gabby wandered aimlessly trying to figure out how such a small piece of gum could have created such a big mess. Look at me. This is crazy. Loco, she said in disbelief. Mommy said that all my gum chewing, chewing would lead to trouble, but did I stop? No, I couldn't stop chewing gum and now I'm covered. <sighs> it didn't make any sense. What was in that limited edition Mighty Mega Ultra Stretchy Super Duper Extended Bubble Bubble Gum anyway, she asked herself. But no answer could explain the amount of gum covering her or why it was impossible to get off. Anything Gabby touched stuck to her like she was made of glue. Oh man, she moped, this stinks. It didn't take long for Gabby to realize the stuff covering her was not your standard ordinary candy store variety bubble gum. No, far from it. This stuff was a whole lot stickier and there was more of it that seemed, it didn't seem possible. In fact, if Gabby hadn't known any better, she would have sworn that she was made out of gum. How did this happen? Gabby wondered, why me? She felt low, she felt lower than low. Gabby felt as low as a wad of chewed up gum scraped from the bottom of a shoe. Until trouble entered the picture. <gasps> Yoink! Help! Stop! Thief! Huh? Hey, that's not nice! What the? Whoa! Look at her arm! Ew! 
Here's your purse, miss. <gasps> my purse, you're my hero. <gasps> Thank you so much, you gooey, uh, sticky, uh, sweet gum girl. Gum girl? Gum girl. Gum girl! Chapter four, a nutty idea. Suddenly, Gabby Gomez didn't feel quite so low. I mean, how could she? Whatever had happened to her had given her some strange and wonderful new superpowers, and she had totally used those powers to help a stranger in need. She was like some kind of comic book hero, swooping in to save the day. Gabby grew so giddy, imagining what else she might be able to do that she started to hum and then to sing. If you start trouble, doot to doot to doot, I'll burst your bubble, doot to doot to doot, cause I'm a, a gum girl, doot doot to doot doot doot, yes I'm a gum girl, doot to doot to doot doot. I don't know, I don't sing. She strolled along feeling quite pleased with herself until she remembered there was some place she was supposed to be. Oh wait, I need to get, I need to get to school, how do I turn back into myself again? Gabby was stuck. If only there were some magic potion that could make Gum Girl disappear and bring back my old self. Wait a minute. Magic potion. Gum. Disappear. Gabby jumped to her feet. Of course, that has to be it. Could the answer be to her sticky bubblegum problem be that obvious? Gabby wasn't certain, but she wasn't going to stand around waiting to find out. Having special powers was neat, but when it came down to it, did she really want to spend the rest of her life sticking to everything? Gabby set off like a bolt of lightning. This has to work, she told herself. Please, please let this work. If it does, I promise I'll never ever sneak another piece of bubblegum as long as I live. Gabby didn't even stop to wonder if she'd be able to keep that promise that she made, but she just whew, ran straight home. Gabby was almost in the front door when she, when a thought stopped her dead in her tracks. What if her mom still hadn't left to drop Rico off at preschool or had come back? Mama would freak. I can't risk her seeing me like this, Gabby thought. I'd never be able to explain. But a quick peek through the kitchen window put her fears to rest. Nobody was home. She dashed inside, grabbed the jar of peanut butter and ran to her room. It was time to test her theory. Ugh. Gross, please work. Minutes later, yes! Hurry, fast, faster! But alas, dun dun dun. Miss Gomez, so nice of you to join us. Miss Smoot stood in front of the classroom with her arms crossed and a look that was anything but nice. Care to explain why you're late? Gabby felt like her mouth had been stuffed with the stickiest bubble gum ever. She struggled for an answer. I woke up with gum in my hair, she finally muttered. Unacceptable, Gabriella. I'm surprised at you. You know I don't stand for tardiness. If this happens again, you'll have detention. Now please take your seat. Ha ha, look who got schooled, taunted Natalie Gooch. Oh, great, thought Gabby as she sank into her chair. Minutes ago, I had superpowers. Now I'm being picked on by the biggest bully on the planet, and I'm powerless to do anything about it. Chapter 5, There and Back. Hola, mommy! Gabby rushed in after what had been her absolute worst day of school ever. Not only had she been chewed out by Miss Moot, but Natalie Gooch had spent the rest of the day teasing her for getting busted. Uh, adios, mommy. She headed straight to her room. On top of everything else, she just couldn't face her mother. I'm making cookies for the bake sale at Rico's school, Mrs. Gomez called out. I think I'll make my famous peanut butter cookies. But Gabby had flown by so quickly that she didn't hear what her mother had said. Sounds great, Gabby called back and closed her bedroom door behind her. She felt terrible. Why had she gone and broken mom's no gum rule? Then again, helping that lady get her purse back had made her feel there was nothing she couldn't do. Gabby had felt super. How great would it be to feel like that, like that the next time mean old Nate, oh, how great would it be to feel like that the next time mean old Natalie picked on her, but how? Gabby stared hard at her hand, concentrating on turning into gum girl again, but nothing happened. Then she wondered if some sort of magic word might do it. Abracadabra, she commanded, still nothing. Juicy, gooey, soft and chewy, Gabby chanted. Nope. She glanced over at her pillow. She always kept an emergency piece of gum hidden under it, just in case she needed some late night chewing. What if? 
Gabby pulled the gum from its hiding place. Did she dare? What about her promise? W what if her mom walked in? Gabby crossed her fingers and popped the gum into her mouth. She started chewing. Nada. This was her last chance. Gabby took a deep breath, blew a bubble and waited. Nothing, nada, nothing. Feeling disgusted and defeated, Gabby let the bubble pop. Pop! Now where did I put that jar of peanut butter? Gabby? I know. Gabby Gomez, that had better not be gum. Peanut butter, peanut butter, it's gotta be here somewhere. Young lady, I thought I told you. Where is it? Where is it? You better not be chewing gum. Oh, hi, Mommy. <coughs> Holding that jar of peanut butter. I thought I heard Mrs. Gomez couldn't believe her eyes. What are you eating? Nothing, just um, peanut butter, answered Gabby. You know, this stuff's not so bad after all. She flashed, she flashed her mother a wide peanut butter grin. Here, Mrs. Gomez reached for the jar. Let me have that. I've been looking all over for it. It's all yours, replied Gabby. I've had plenty. <laughs> okay, then maybe you should watch, wash up. Dinner's almost ready. I feel like Mrs. Gomez knows she's on to something. Whew! Chapter six, stretched thin. Over the next few days, Gabby got better and better at controlling her gum girl superpowers. She also got better and better at hiding them from her mom. In fact, she got so good at hiding her powers that she stopped worrying about her mom's rule against gum. Besides, she asked, she asked herself, wasn't it good that she was helping people in need? Wasn't that more important than some silly rule against chewing bubble gum? Every morning, Gabby left for school with a piece of gum in her hand and a renewed sense of purpose in her heart. And every morning, there were more and more people who needed her help along the way and every morning Gabby tried to do it all no task was too big bye mommy I'm running late for school te quiero corazón don't forget your lunch got it love you too or too small for gum girl until one morning ready set gum girl <laughs> Gabby got completely carried away with being a superhero. First, she rescued a kitten. Wow. Thank you, gum girl. Wow. Then she helped a little old lady cross the street. And after that, she recovered a lost set of keys Ooh. and stopped a, run a runaway stroller. Gabby was having a great time saving the day, but little did she know that her time was about to run out. Dun, dun, dun. Chapter seven, busted. Late again, Mrs. Miss Gomez, asked Miss Smoot, the instant Gabby walked into the classroom. Gabby had let time get away from her this time. I can explain, Gabby stammered. She had to think fast. What could she say that wouldn't give her away her secret? I, um, I stopped to help someone and lost track of time? Really, Miss Smoot didn't budge. Who? And why was that more important than getting to my class on time? Uh, Gabby just stood there silent. I'm, I I'm sorry, Gabriella, but you were warned. It's an after-school detention for you. <sighs> Miss Smoot shook her head, disappointed. And if it happens again, I'll have to speak to your mother. Now take your seat. Gabby couldn't let that happen. Couldn't let that happen or else she'd be in serious trouble. Ha ha ha, Boston. Enough, Natalie Gooch. Miss Smoot shot to Gabby's defense. I've also warned you about making fun of people. Well, young lady, since you think Gabby's punishment is so entertaining, you can keep her company. Detention for you, too. Oh, great. It's bad enough that I've gotten detention, but now I have to spend it with Natalie. <sighs> Gabby glanced over at her her tormentor. Not only were her eyes glaring, but her nostrils were flaring too. The look was almost enough to make Gabby forget the trouble she was in for being late, or the possibility of her mother finding out she was late again. Almost. Well, at least she can't just sit there staring at me for the rest of the day, Gabby thought with relief. Later at detention, tick, 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 tick. Natalie Gooch, whew, saved by the bell. 
Gabby was glad that detention finally ended. She had to get home and get home fast. If her mom found out that she had gotten detention, there would be a million questions. Right away, Gabby realized that her best bet was to turn into Gum Girl. Gabby Gomez could never make it home in time, but Gum Girl, she could make it in home in time. It would be close, but all she would have to do was change back before anyone saw her. This will be a snap, Gabby grinned at her brilliance of a plan. Chapter eight. Oh snap! You see that plane? Gabby hadn't even made it close to home when her perfect plan hit a huge snag. Oh snap, cried Gum Girl. That plane is in trouble. Forgetting everything else, she sprang into action. There was no time to waste. Something had to be done and quick. I gotta do something. Huh? Think fast, Gabby. Look at her on that plane. She's on the plane. If I can just stick this wing back, stick it back together. Flight 808 to tower, we are losing altitude. I repeat, we are losing altitude. Gum girl pulled with all her might. Oh. Wait, tower, we, see, we seem to be regaining control. Gotta keep it together. You're not gonna believe this, they can see her. Emergency crew standing by, 808, you are clear for landing. She did it! Ah! After the plane was safely on the ground, the entire airport erupted in celebration. The passengers and crew of Flight 808, as well as everyone in the terminal, cheered the brave little gum girl who had miraculously saved the day. Reporters from all over the city had witnessed the rescue from the ground and were descending upon the airport. Even the mayor showed up. Everyone wanted to know Gum Girl's story. Gabby felt exhilarated. I can't believe I did it, she whispered to herself. I can't believe I actually did it. She barely had time to think before questions began to fly at her from all directions. When did you realize the plane was in trouble? Fired a reporter. I was on my way home from school and... Gabby started. A second reporter interrupted. How did you figure out what to do? Well, I... A third reporter broke in. Where did you learn to stretch like that? Gabby's head reeled as she tried to come up with something to say. One last... Oh, as she tried to come up with something to say, one last very young reporter broke through the noise with one last question. Well, truth be told, it was more of a statement. You mentioned school, recalled this fourth reporter. How old are you anyway? Your parents must be proud to have such a brave and dependable daughter. His question stuck in Gabby's brain. Even though he was doing good deeds between the secrets she'd been keeping and the rules she'd been breaking, her life was turning into a sticky, sticky mess. And the guilt was becoming harder and harder to swallow. All at once, Gabby felt neither brave nor dependable. She felt just the opposite like a big, fat coward who her parents shouldn't even trust. Um, Gum Girl stammered, I, I think I, I have to um, get back uh, to my secret hideout. Yeah, that's right, my secret hideout. And before anyone could ask another question, Gum Girl stretched her arm towards home. Oh man, she thought, I should feel really great after saving all those people, but I just feel, Gabby struggled for the word, awful. Her mom and dad would be so proud of what she had just done. She knew they'd be, but I can't even share it with them because I haven't been telling the truth. <sighs> that settles it. Gabby finally said to herself, I have to admit what I did. I have to tell the truth. I just have to. On the other side of town, in an old abandoned spatula factory, Someone else was first learning of the brave little gum girl who had stopped a plane from crashing with her bare, gummy hands, and he was cooking up a plan to destroy her. Dun, dun, dun! And that's it. It is my favorite. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you want to read the, the next adventures of Gum Girl. Thank you so much. Gracias al cine.